In the Pokemon universe, you can throw your kids out when they are 12. But if you use your bike indoors, you get the death penalty. They release two Pokemon games every time, and I picked Ruby like everyone. Because that is an epic monster that could eradicate worlds, and that is... That's an overpriced aquarium fish. The game starts with a professor explaining what Pokemons are. A professor of Pokemon, huh? Parents must be proud. You get picky gender, I picked a girl. Because the guy's name is Brendan. Who names their kids Brendan? At least in the first game the name was Red and that's a conversation starter. Speaking of Red, I guess I should name her Ruby? But that's a stripper name. So I went with Spike. Spike is a cool name for cool people. We see Spike in a moving van. There are lots of epic video game openings, but you can't beat a moving van. Also, why is she in the back? I'm starting to believe this whole throwing kids out at 12 is not a common thing, it's just that her parents hate her. Welcome to your new hometown, Little Root, that you are going to be in for 7 minutes. This is the new house, where 3 people are supposed to live, but there's only one bed. In the Pokemon world, families are a bit too close. Through a television broadcast we find out that the reason we moved here was because the dad has become the new gym leader. Two towns away. You'd expect him to move there but Hoenn has a serious housing shortage. This small town of two houses and a lab has three homeless people. Our neighbor is the professor so we go there but he's not there. There he is! And if we don't save him he's going to have his arm ripped off by a rabid dog. We get to pick Pokemon. I'm a big fan of classical art and my favorite kind are memes from 2006. So I picked Mudkip. You kill the cute doggy, then you get to keep the Mudkip, then you get to face your rival Brandon who has a Pokemon that yours is weak against. And this is the actual reason I picked a girl character, because now I can easily call Brendan a massive cunt. After you humiliate him, the professor tells you to go meet your dad in the Petalburg gym. Spike, you need to defeat 8 gym leaders like me to gain access to the Pokemon League. And right now you're too awful to defeat me. I could defeat my dad when I was 6. You are an embarrassment to our family and to our ancestors and I hate you. So we're off to beat the first gym leader in Rustboro City. But first we gotta go through a forest. Here we meet a member of Team Magma. An organized crime syndicate that has realized that there is just no money in heroin. And if you want to make some serious cash, you gotta increase the planet's landmass. When you defeat these guys, why do they give you money? Is it a bribe? The first gym is a rock gym, owned by Roxanne. I don't allow puns in my videos. The first gym is owned by Ace. A cool name for cool people. And she goes down in three hits. Why is this necessary to get into the Pokemon League? Showing this at the entrance should lower my chances. The next gym is on an island. How will we get there? You see, the CEO of a million dollar corporation wants you to deliver a letter. And he's not gonna stand in line in the post office and telephones are for weak people. And while we're on this boat, let me tell you my Pokemon story. I used to watch the second series. There were two series. One was horrible. It was about this kid named Ash who said, I'm gonna do something. Then he did fuck all for 7,000 episodes. But the other one was the greatest thing. It was about these kids, they had Pokemon, then they penetrated a giant vampire. I did also play the games. I remember being very sad when I realized that Pokemons weren't real. Then my uncle told me not to be so sure, and that's when he took me to my very first dog fight. It was mesmerizing, like the games came to life. That was 16 years ago. If you want to feel really old, the release of Ruby is closer to the moon landing than today. On the island we find the second gym, a fighting type gym. The least creative Pokemon type. I mean there are water Pokemons, there are fire Pokemons, there are psychic Pokemons, then there are Pokemons who fight. I kick his arse. Turns out your fist can't protect you against throwing mud. When defeating this guy you can now use the HM move flash. HM moves are moves you can use outside of battle. They are mostly useless, can't be removed and are most likely a torture experiment created by Nintendo. You deliver this letter to this blue haired freak. But the CEO also wanted you to deliver some parts to a man named Captain Stern in Slateport City. Can't really blame him for that one though. I'd trust a random 12 year old over UPS. We get to Slateport, we go to the museum, give the package to Stern, then we are robbed. There is apparently no law enforcement in this entire country, so maybe invest in some security captain. After you defeat those two, the leader of Magma shows up. Stop being in our way. Increasing the planet's landmass is just a harmless hobby. Also, this guy in my golf club won't shut up about his beach house. Won't be so braggy soon, Robert. 
then they leave and I fished on every corner and caught the aquarium fish. The next gym is in Marvel City. It's an electricity gym and water is weak against electricity. But apparently lightning can't protect you against getting mud in your face. Then for some reason the story completely stops and the game tells you to spend a couple of hours walking across the entire nation. Finally you get to a cave where Team Magma has stolen a meteorite from Professor Cosmos. Okay, first of all, buy a gun. Second, Professor Cosmos? Did you seriously change your name when you got your PhD? Then you have to travel to the top of a volcano, where you once again meet the leader of Team Magma. I'm going to use this energy filled meteorite to make this volcano go boom, so that in a hundred years there will be a bit more fully habitable land. Obviously hundreds of people and Pokemon will die, but you can stop all this by defeating my three Pokemon right now, no pressure. Ah, oh, darn it, no mass murdering today. Then he leaves and did not take his meteorite with him. You reach a city that can only be reached by going down from the volcano, so their economy should be in shambles, but it doesn't look like it. But then you find out they have a herb store, and it all makes sense. There's a gym here too. It's a fire gym, and what I did in there goes against the Geneva Convention. Time for us to face Dad. The theme of Dad's gym is item use, and that has got to be the worst theme I've ever heard. How did that come about? Uh, congratulations on becoming gym leader. Now, what will be your gym's theme? I need you to call up the other gym leaders and tell them that they can't use items anymore. And if they disagree, I'm gonna sue them. Defeating your dad gives you the ability to traverse water. Ruby has has a lot of water. I wouldn't lower a review score because of it, because that's stupid. But damn it, that's the 17th time. Kinda makes you sympathize with Team Magma. Speaking of Team Magma, you find them once again northwest of the electricity gym. They are robbing a weather station. I don't understand why. They are weather scientists, not NATO. The next gym is in Fortree City. A uh, treehouse city. Fortree. Why you don't outsource city planning to a preschool? It has a bird gym. Sadly, the Game Boy Advance is not powerful enough to render all the bird shit. After that's done, you get informed to travel to Mount Pyre. And on top of that mountain, you meet the Magma Team Leader again. Ha! You're too late! To wake up an ancient, maybe not real Pokémon, I have stolen this precious blue orb from these elderly folks. Ugh. What am I doing with my life? Then the old people give Spike the opposite blue orb. Could you imagine if the Mona Lisa was stolen again and the lure was like, well that sucks. Who wants Aphrodite? You have to go back to Captain Stern and then you see Team Magma steal a submarine. And then, wait did they just? I have so many questions. It is decided that Spike should attack Team Magma's base head on. Sounds like a suicide mission, but it turns out not only the good guys have forgotten to invest in some security. I am literally robbing these people right now. Am, am I the bad guy? Master Ball. Well, I guess I'm using it, but we are too late. They have already left and they are going to use the blue orb to awaken that red monster so that it can evaporate the world's water and billions of people will die. But I can't go after them because I need to beat this gym first so that my Pokemon are allowed to go underwater. Not that I need to save the world or anything you twat. We find the sub, we go in and oh no the red monster is awake and we can't control him. Waking him makes the sun more bright in this area. Not a hole in in the ozone layer, just the sun is brighter. How does that even work? Does the sun look down on Earth and when he sees that red fella, he's like, Oi, fuck that guy. This is actually somewhat epic for Game Boy Advance and oh, come on. Not that it matters, you can trade a level 4 sloth with this raccoon and then get the cover model. There's one more gym and spoiler alert, I win. Then you go through a cave that feels like the longest in video games. And finally we are here in front of the Pokemon League and I am too weak. Time for a training montage. There we go! Now, I have defeated the Elite Four. I might have overtrained for this. But now I'm about to face the champion. And it's the blue haired guy we delivered the letter to. What a twist! I didn't overtrain for this. Everyone else undertrained. I liked Ruby. But it needs way more water. One out of ten. Worst game ever. And that is the Killian experience. Subscribe for more garbage. So I just hit 10,000 subscribers. But my only dream since starting this channel is to do a QA video with unrelated Call of Duty footage. In 
in the background. Leave questions in the comments.